And while deepfake technology has led to some people getting scammed or impersonated online, an Australian academic has found a way to use it for good. And he joins me now, Professor Sanjay Jha, a cybersecurity and AI expert from UNSW. Son Professor, thank you very much for joining me. You're developing new technology to create deepfakes. So let's begin with a look at the a video that you've created with this program. I am recording myself speaking so that they can feed this video into their program and create a deep fake of myself, which is interesting. I, I can't wait to see uh, what, what comes out. Um, so the figure summarized is everything in the context of the wireless security that we have seen so far. Security can be very challenging. And so what have we just looked at and what could this be used for? So you've seen Jacob Gillard uh, from our media unit um, giving us a few seconds of his uh, video and voice recording. And we try to create a persona of uh, Jacob, uh, and then we could feed arbitrary text and uh, that would read in Jacob's voice and his talking head. And um, the positive side of this technology is that uh, we can, for example, integrate this talking head into lecturing. And um, you don't have to do the uh, like uh, hard yards of uh, recording, re-recording if there is any change and all that. So it kind of increases productivity and uh, makes it more flexible. Uh, you could uh, make it multilingual. So same lecture could be given in Chinese, Mandarin, uh, for example, or Hindi or French or whatever it is. Um, marketing uh, companies could use these kind of technologies to automatically generate content at low cost and increase productivity. And so how would it be different to what's currently out there? So um, our niche is uh, in terms of, uh, say, quality of voice. So we have patented technology whereby we can take only a small sample of your voice and, and clone it. If we had hours of data, you see like a lot of uh, tools and techniques that use, say, cloning Obama's voice and all that. So uh, we, we are doing it, it much more efficiently, if you like, and that's energy saving. Uh, one of the problems with AI is that it is taking a lot of uh, server um, bandwidth and so forth. Um, but also, I would like to correct that the term deep fake is a bit uh, of a problem because it gets bad press uh, and it catches people's attention, but the technology is called deep learning. So I'm not creating deep fake. The intent in deep fake is to be deceptive. So you put someone's voice without their consent, you fake their voice, uh, you use uh, people's um, heads and implant it on say some porn stars without uh, their consent and so forth. So those are the kind of applications which is called deep fake, but the technology is deep learning for both voice and video cloning and that can be used for many uh, positive uh, sort of uses that I've highlighted. And how could you prevent this technology being used for malicious purposes? That That's a, a difficult one and uh, first of all we need to make sure that we do watermark um, both for voice and video. With video, you could have explicit message saying that it's artificial intelligence uh, created. We want to make sure that the provenance is recorded. With voice, it it is a bit tricky to watermark. That can work with machines, for example. So if you're going to upload this on a portal, they can check for watermark to see if the content is uh, generated properly and has uh, ethical practices. Um, but other than that, there are multiple tools and people got to be vigilant to make sure that uh, they are aware of uh, real versus uh, these cloned uh, content. And, and some of them are for legitimate purposes, others are for deceptive purposes. And the rise of deep fakes online has led to an increase in scams and impersonations and they're getting really hard to spot. How can, what are your tips? How can someone spot a deep fake online? So if the content is recorded, uh, there are many tools and portals where you can check these things, uh, but even the fake contents are becoming much and much more sophisticated. For voice, it is a bit tricky, especially if it's real time and a scammer calls you on phone line, you don't have much time to think about these things and you react if they're asking for extortion, saying that they're playing your child's voice. Uh, um, so I think uh, the best thing is to keep your calm and make sure to look at the context, uh, whether you have alternate ways of uh, checking the fact before you pay any ransom. Um, there have been cases where, for example, um, video calls have been faked and an executive calls their accountant to pay 
thousands of dollars to some account. And those things, uh, you need to look at the context to see if your executive is away. Um, you ask some questions, for example, don't hesitate and simply comply. How much have deep fakes evolved in recent years and where do you think they go from here? Well, uh, the tools have become uh, easily available and it's on rise. I can't give you a percentage, but uh, you will see that uh, particularly audio is uh, lower hanging fruit. Um, the uh, portals can very easily provide audio cloning and then people can misuse it. I'm not saying that everyone is misusing it, uh, but they do get misused. Uh, video takes a bit of time, but that's also becoming easier. But not to say that these things were not happening before the deep learning methods came uh, into practice. Uh, simply, they have made it easier because people can go online and very quickly put their photo, video, audio samples or someone else's and that can create uh, contents for good as well as uh, bad purposes. In old days, you had photoshops and other video editing tools. People could do those things and they were doing, but that took more time. Right now, it's a lot easier. Professor, thank you so much for your time. That's Professor Sanjay Jha from UNSW.